Hello friends, welcome to today's operating system class and in this class we will see the multi-level feedback queue scheduling algorithm. Multi-level feedback queue scheduling is the extension of multi-level queue scheduling algorithm. So let us see this multi-level queue scheduling algorithm versus multi-level feedback queue scheduling algorithm. After that, the important concept which is implemented in this multi-level feedback queue scheduling is aging process and third one is what are the parameters to design this particular queue scheduling algorithm with a simple example. So all these things we will see in today's class. The drawback of multi-level queue scheduling is the process do not move between the queues. Uh, that means once the process is created, a new process is created, that process is fixed to any particular queue and the process cannot move to other queue. Okay, for CPU execution. Okay, this is new process creation and different queues are there. Once the process is created, immediately the process will be fixed to any particular queue and the process should be executed only within, within this queue and it is not allowed to move any other queue. So, this is multi-level queue scheduling. But when come to multi-level feedback queue scheduling, the, there is no fixed queue for the process. Okay, that is the process can move between various queues. A process of this particular queue can be moved to another queue also during execution. Right? And next let us see the parameters of multi-level feedback queue. This is almost similar to multi-level queue except this aging concept. Okay, now let us see the parameters of multi-level feedback queue scheduler. The first one is number of queue. Here also we are having number of ready queues. Then we have to define how many number of ready queues are uh, there. And second one is scheduling algorithm for each queue. And here also there are different scheduling algorithms available for each queue. We need to define which scheduling algorithm is for which particular queue. Right? And next one is the method used to determine when to upgrade a process and when to demote the process that also we need to determine and the last one is the method used to determine which queue that is which queue a process will enter that process needs a services okay that is when the process will get services in the cpu and how it will be selected by the uh, scheduler that is multi-level feedback scheduler okay so these are the important parameters we need to consider while designing the multi-level feedback queue scheduling apart from this the aging can be implemented by using multi-level feedback queue let us see how the aging will be implemented for all the processes aging of processes if your process uses too much of cpu time that is if your process executed very long time it will be moved to lower priority queues this scheme leaves IO bound and interactive process in higher priority queues. This is important. Okay, That is, if a particular process that utilizes more time of CPU, then that particular process will be preempted to low priority queues. This is high priority queue and this is low priority queue. Okay. If the particular process utilize CPU time more, then that particular process will be preempted and that will be moved to low priority queues. Right? And this is not applicable for IO bound or interactive process in higher priority queues. Then the process waits too long in lower priority queue. Okay, this is the second situation. Second situation means if the process waiting a very long time in the low priority queue that will be moved to higher priority queue immediately that will move to higher priority queue for execution cpu execution so this is uh, called as aging that is used to prevent the starvation because if the process is waiting in low priority queue that will not get the cpu for execution hence the starvation occurs to overcome this particular thing the aging is introduced in the multi level feedback queue scheduling and now let us see one very simple example for this aging process. Uh, three ready queues are there. This is Q0 and this is Q1 and this is Q2. Okay, we are having three ready queues 
and Q0 is the highest priority. So, this is highest priority Q and the Q2 is the lowest priority Q. So, this is lowest priority Q. Q3, Q2 is the lowest priority Q and the scheduler first execute the process in the Q0 okay, because this is the highest priority Q is not it and if the process in Q2 wants to execute means suppose if we are having some processes and this processes want to execute and this is possible only if Q1 and Q0 are empty. If these two Qs are empty then only the process in the, this Q2 will get executed okay, because this is the least priority Q is not it. Suppose if process 1 is currently running process Q1 is currently running suppose if the process Q1 Q1 is here is not it this particular process want to execute that is currently running CP currently running in the CPU and one new process will arrive in the Q0 this particular Q then what will happen immediately the currently running process the currently running process is from this Q1 is not it this Q1 will get preempted and this particular Q that is this particular process from first Q will get executed in the CPU okay that is the currently running process from Q1 is preempted so that the process Q0 will be serviced right. Here in this example we are having three different queues this is Q0 and this is Q1 and this is Q2 and all these Q are having different scheduling algorithms that, that is the first Q the quantum time is 8 milliseconds when come to next Q the quantum time is 16 milliseconds and the last Q the scheduling algorithm is first to come first to serve scheduling. If a process is created the, the newly created process will be assigned to the first Q that is Q0. Q0 is having highest priority, highest priority Q is not it. So, it will assign to Q0 and the process will allow to execute 8 milliseconds, only 8 milliseconds. If the size of process is less than 8 milliseconds, then immediately it will complete its job and it will get exited. Otherwise, the process will be preempted and that will be placed at the end of Q1, okay, here the quantum time is 16. So, up to 16 milliseconds this process will be allowed to execute the CPU. If the process is greater than 24 milliseconds, if the process is greater than 24 milliseconds then that will be placed that is that particular process will be preempted and that will be placed at the end of Q2 where the first come first serve scheduling algorithm is being implemented. Okay. That means, if there is no process in this Q1 and Q0, then only the process in Q2 will get executed. Okay. So, that is explained in this particular diagram. Suppose, if the process newly created process will be allocated to this first Q, that is shorter quantum 8 milliseconds, the process will be get executed in CPU. If it is longer than 8 milliseconds, that is the burst time is greater than 8 milliseconds, then that will be preempted and placed at the end of this end of the second queue. The second queue is Q1, is not it? Then all this process will get executed up to 16 milliseconds. Only up to 16 milliseconds this process will get executed. After that, if the process burst time is greater than 24 milliseconds that is 8 plus 16 is 24 isn't it. So, 24 milliseconds then that will be placed at the end of the third queue that is Q2 right. So, here the first come first serve algorithm is uh, followed in this particular queue that when this process will get executed if this Q1 and Q2 both queues are empty then only the process in this particular queue will get executed. Okay. Up to this we have seen the multi-level feedback queue scheduling and in this class we saw this 
comparison of multi level queue scheduling and multi level feedback queue scheduling after that the working of multi level feedback queue scheduling algorithm and this is the question time what are the properties to be considered while designing the multi level feedback queue scheduling students please write the answer in the comment box and in the next class we will see the another important topics from second unit thank you